there's something about, <laughs> there's something about getting the song down for the first time and figuring out what it's supposed to sound like that reminds me of Kill Bill Volume 1 for some reason. Hey everybody, my name's Mark. Welcome back to 2000 Hours of Banjo. What I mean by that is there's a scene in Kill Bill Volume 1 where Kiddo, Uma Thurman's character, uh, wakes up from her coma, drags herself to Buck's truck, and she needs to will her legs into moving because they've been basically atrophied and paralyzed over the years that she was in a coma. And she just repeats, move your big toe, move your big toe, move your big toe, and then finally, or wiggle your big toe, wiggle your big toe, and then finally it wiggles. And then after that, she says, hard parts over. And that's kind of what it feels like for me anyway, when I'm learning a new song. For me, definitely the hard part is memorizing the tablature, getting the rhythm of the song down, getting the basics of all the maneuvers down, all the, form, all the shapes and all the um, plucking patterns down. And then once I've kind of got that locked in my head, I feel the hard parts over and I just need to start ironing all the wrinkles out, speeding it up, working the smooth things out and stuff like that. But toe wiggles, hard parts over. Anyway, that was a bit of an intro there. Um, today is a huge day. Today we are at 510 hours of banjo practice. We've exceeded 500 hours. We are past the quarter mark into our 2000 hour of banjo journey. Before I get further into that though, um, I did want to back up and do a little bit of housekeeping. First of all, um, <laughs> this is just silly, kind of behind the scenes stuff, but the lapel mic. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you've noticed that I've switched different types of audio and video equipment, and then I went to these, uh, these Rode mics, and uh, then, I, then I switched it to a lapel uh, little clip-on microphone. I didn't like that because I kept forgetting about it and trying to take something off and it just kept ripping off. I still have it, but I'm afraid I'm going to break it one of these times and it was like 70 bucks. So I'm just clipping the actual road mic here and I get it. The, the volume of my voice is going to get louder as I point towards the, the mic and then away from the mic, it gets softer, but I like it. There's a little deering Deering uh, emblem right there, and I just know where to put it every time, so at least it's consistently not consistent, if that makes any sense. <laughs> the other thing is, I'm changing up my practice routine a little bit. Um, I've have you heard of everybody's heard of practice makes perfect, um, but there's a few lesser folks out there that heard that practice doesn't make perfect, practice makes permanent. And if you're doing something wrong and you practice it over and over again, you're making that permanent. Perfect practice makes permanent is what I keep hearing. And I've noticed that my typical routine of warming up by going through all the songs, <clears throat> and then once I've gone through all the songs that I know, working on the newer stuff first, is really have been a recipe for repeating mistakes, for, for increasing the frequency of mistakes. So instead what I'm doing is I'm actually working more on the old stuff first, front loading the practice with that, working on that material, working on the speed drills, and that seems to get my hands a lot more limber quicker so that when I do get to the new stuff, I'm making fewer mistakes. And if the idea is to make as few mistakes as possible so that we're wearing that groove in our brain nice and tight and there's no tangent mistakes going left and right, the better. And, and so that's the recipe right now is I'm front loading my practices with the old material, working on speed drills on the old material that limbers up and warms up my hands. And then later on I dive into the new material and I seem to have improved my accuracy when I work through that new material. And hopefully that will make that new material lock into my brain a lot quicker than it has been before. 
also, and even though I'm, I sit down mostly for these videos, I'm standing up for almost all of my practices now. And there's a couple of reasons for that. First is, man, I just did a video on lying and here I am basically catching myself in another lie. Back around uh, Thanksgiving of last year, my wife and I were putting up Christmas lights, but this year we decided to screw in the hooks into the eaves of the house rather than using the staple gun that I've been using for the past like 10 years. Anyway, so my arms were above my head screwing these hooks for hours because my wife decided to screw in a hook like every foot rather than like every two or three feet. So we have hundreds of hooks around the perimeter of the house. And I woke up the next day and I could barely move my left arm. And my shoulder was extraordinarily painful and it felt pretty locked. And I said back then that it was bursitis. Kind of lied. Um, it, <laughs> The diagnosis was actually frozen shoulder syndrome. Um, thankfully, a more mild case of it, because I do have a friend at work who has, who who went through frozen shoulder, and he literally could could not move his arm. Thankfully, I could move my arm, but it was really painful. Um, frozen shoulder, if you don't know, is a severe irritation of the the bursa or the rotator cuff up here in the shoulder, and it takes like two years to get over. So I've been dealing with it for quite some time. Um, there are certain movements that are still pretty painful. It still aches quite a bit. One of the things that I found out though, is that if I play seated down, sitting down, for some reason that seems to aggravate the shoulder more so than when I'm standing up. I think I could just drop my shoulders and relax a little bit more. I think when I sit, maybe the banjo kind of comes up a little bit and then I, I end up shrugging my shoulders maybe a little bit more. I'm not exactly sure, but I've been standing up a whole lot more. Um, probably nine out of 10 practices I'm standing up. The other nice thing about that is <laughs> one day when I'm playing on a stand, I'll be able to play standing up quite comfortably. And it is different when you're sitting down, when I sit down, um, the, the neck of the banjo naturally angles out um, or more horizontal, barely, but more so than standing up. And I can see the fret, all the, the, the fretboard on the neck a whole lot better. And it's kind of, mm, I don't wanna say cheating, but uh, I'm relying on my vision and what I see, which is kind of funny because it's like, I'm approaching 50 and it's time for bifocals and all these strings are, they're, they're blurry to me because I can't see them clearly but I can see the fretboard pretty clearly. When I'm standing up, the, the banjo tilts straight up and down or even out a little bit, and I can't see the fretboard. So I'm relying just on the position, and I think it helps a little bit with my um, muscle memory and getting into position rather than looking at, eventually I'll be, hopefully, I'll be playing at a speed that uh, my vision isn't going to be what I'm relying on anyway. It's gonna be muscle memory. Muscle memory, once you've got it down, is quick, much quicker than locating something visually and then placing your hand there. That hand-eye coordination just can't beat muscle, muscle memory coordination once you get to that higher speed. So that's something that I've, I've changed also. Um, also going back, I'm, I'm changing a little bit how I play Cripple Creek. Uh, towards the beginning. Now I've been, um, uh, somebody commented in one of my last videos, like a, a video of Cripple Creek, like a really good video of Cripple Creek. And I've seen plenty of videos of Cripple Creek. And I'm starting to notice now that my ears are getting a little bit more tuned to what it is that I'm doing, that the very, very beginning of Cripple Creek, the way I play it sounds different than what a lot of other people play it. And I believe it's just, I, what I typically do is on the pinch, it goes pinch and then first string. So I pinch while, I'm, while you're fretting the first string with the middle finger on the second fret. Pinch. And what I've been doing is pinch and slide down the, the fifth fret at the same time. Like that. And what I'm hearing because they're moving so fast, it's hard to tell. But I, I don't think many people play that way. They play, they pinch, and when they 
pick the second string, they time it and do the slide to land on the fifth fret once they pick that second string. So it sounds, the difference is that versus that. Uh, and it, it, it's a very subtle difference, but I think I've been doing it wrong and I need to break that habit of and do more uh, Once I get up to speed, I'll do a better demo of it once I kind of got it uh, down better. But to me, just, just that hesitation throws everything off. It's, it's amazing that once you've been playing a song for so long, a subtle change really throws things off. This is the whole idea of uh, did I practice perfectly or did I just make that permanent and, and did it wrong for so long? I will try to break that, fix it, and then I'll do a better demo later of... Uh, yeah, my slide and my, my picking timing is, is off. Versus... Oof. good back to back anyway so I'm working on that too all right getting back to we're at 510 hours of banjo which is which is amazing it is now the end of June basically the beginning of July of 2024 by the way I'll probably not be putting out another video between now and 4th of July so have a good 4th of July everybody I know I will be definitely barbecuing outdoors hopefully throwing back a few and enjoying the family so have a good, happy 4th of July. Um, but it, it is now mid-July. I started this whole project, this learning the banjo, January 1st, 2023. That makes it, it's been a year and a half to hit five, uh, 500 hours. Do the math really quick. And we're looking at hitting 2000 hours after six years of practicing banjo. Now that seems pretty hairy, actually, it seems, downright scary to me. But when I, I started to run the numbers a little bit, and I'll put these up on the screen as I go through it, um, the, <laughs> I don't really have good records for how long it took for the first 100 hours to get the first 100 hours. But the second 100 hours, from 200 hours to 300 hours, took 200 days. So on average, I was practicing a half hour a day. Now, granted, I had to take three and a half months off because of the injury to my finger. So that includes those three and a half months off. The, the third set of 100 hours from 300 to 400, that only took 71 days. And then from 400 to 500, that's taken 66 days. And when you break that down, 100 hours and 66 days, I'm, I'm hitting an hour and a half every single day pretty consistently on average, which is good because I found that I can do an hour and a half of practice per day pretty comfortably. So I think I can stick with this hour and a half per day practice. If I keep up with the hour and a half per day practice, I'll be at 750 hours by the end of this year. And instead of taking six years to get to 2,000 hours, I will be able to get to it in four and a quarter years, which means that we have two and three quarters years left rather than, you know, <laughs> four and a half years or, yeah, four and a half years left uh, of, to get to that 2,000 mark. Now, once I get to that 2,000 mark, uh, is there going to be a 5,000 hours of banjo or a 10,000 hours of banjo? We'll see. Uh, maybe, yeah, that would be pretty interesting to document 10,000, we'll really pull the Malcolm Gladwell of 10,000 hours, make somebody a maestro, we'll see. Um, so we'll, we'll figure it out when we get there. I'm not worried about that now. My goal is 2,000 hours. I do want to get to 2,000 hours. We're a quarter of the way there. I think if I can stick with the process, uh, progress that I'm doing now with an hour and a half a day, then we can get there in another two and a three and two and three quarters years. And that would be 
that would be an amazing feat. That would be a total of four and a uh, four and a quarter years to get two thousand hours, uh, which is which is great because you know I I work <laughs> I work a lot on the weekends too, chopping wood and and maintaining property, the property and everything like that. But uh, I work a, a normal nine to five or eight hours a day or whatever. I guess nine to five is is that's more East Coast for you New Yorkers on that are part of the the uh, the union that. <laughs> I think you only work 35 hours a day, anyway, or 35 hours a week rather than the 40 hours that we do here in the, the West Coast. Anyway, moving on, a little bit of reflection on the past. I'm constantly amazed. I, I do look back at some old videos and I think back to how I felt when, you know, I hit 15, 20, 30 hours and when I first got bored and cabbage down. I thought it was amazing. Now I, I, I look back now and I, Gosh, I think I sound horrible, but in that moment back then, I, I it really was amazing. Just like this, it just feels amazing. Playing Wayfaring Stranger, that's a complex song for me. It's very, very much intermediate. That I'm being able to play it, it's, I, I never thought I would be able to get here. I, again, I've got zero experience with music whatsoever prior to this. I think the closest thing I ever got to music was I tried out for choir when I was like in the second grade and they're like nope you don't you don't you your voice is too nasally who knows why they kicked me out and and that was it i outside of listening to music i've never tried to attempt to play any instrument my entire life so being able to do all this i'm i'm constantly amazed yes maybe by you know a thousand hours i'll be looking at how i'm playing at 500 hours like, oh that's pretty bad but again in this moment it feels like an incredible accomplishment it feels really amazing Speaking of which, a thousand hours. We're at 500 hours. We're halfway to the goal of getting that Neckville banjo. Um, so that Neckville banjo is going to get purchased sometime in 2025. That will happen, maybe even the first quarter or the first half of 2025. So I'm doing constantly window shopping on the website, making sure, thinking of what I want to pick out. I may pick out, they, they do have one that has a, uh, uh, a wood tone ring rather than a metal tone ring. It's a, the Timbertronic tone ring. I might go for that one just because it's lighter than the, uh, either the brass or the whatever metal one that they use. And that, that is helpful to me. It's one of the reasons why I picked up this Deering is because it, you know, out of the box is like five pounds or something like that. And that's because I, um, I got in a motorcycle accident some years ago and I shattered my collarbone. So I've got a plate and screws here and every once in a while, like especially now that I'm standing more, I, I can feel it. I can feel like, you know, I'm skinny. <laughs> I don't have much fat on me and I can swear to God I can feel the, uh, the Phillips head screws. I can tell that they're Phillips, Phillips head when I push through the skin. Funny side note, my wife <laughs> also has a broken left collarbone. She also has a plate and screws. She got that from roller derby. One of her teammates did that for her. Me, it was a motorcycle. I beat her by one screw. I think I've got seven screws in my shoulder or my collarbone and she's got like six or so. So I'm, I, I don't want to be a one upper, but uh, I got seven screws, not just six. Lastly, um, $500. That was how much this banjo cost me when I, um, first got it, or actually what, what it cost my wife when she got it for me for Christmas back in, at the end of 2022. $500, 500 hours. This thing now costs me a dollar an hour to play and I'll get cheaper moving forward. I love this Daring Banjo. I really do. I don't think I'll ever get rid of it. I, um, even when I do get my Neckville Banjo, I'll probably keep this one at the cabin so I don't have to keep transporting banjos back and forth. And then I'll learn how to play both. I know that the Neckville banjo has a, a little bit wider nut and that may take some adjustment. And, but that may be good, learning how to play on a, a narrow neck and then a wider neck uh, contemporaneously so that I can just pick up whichever one and play. Anyway, a lot of, a lot of yapping today and, and not much playing. Um, I will be putting that compilation of all the songs I know how to play, played as best as I can as, as a form of recital. I'll be getting out that, that one out pretty soon. Uh, but until then, 
I've got some practice to do. We're still a long ways for 2,000 hours, so I better get to it. Thanks for tuning in. I will see you next time.